And a little be fun sequencing up a day today. Zero chance of rain. Supposed to be about 55 degrees. Perfect for painting. May even warm up in the afternoon, get a small ride. And we have our grandson coming to see us this afternoon for fun and games. Now our fairing is ready for the yellow paint, which I hope is going to come out to be an exact match now. This is a very difficult color to match. And as you can imagine, I'm really concerned with that. So I will be real careful about making sure I bring the part out and take a look at it and make sure I got it close. I was really happy with the original match, but now we're painting and it's uh, you know, six months later. There's always the risk it's not going to match perfectly. And the 750 is one bike that I spent a lot of time repairing and doing little things to uh, match parts. A year after the bike was, I actually had to buy a second can of paint. And what happened was, really didn't super, super, super match. And so I wound up being really disappointed. And what happened with this? I had painted this part of the windshield. I have two of these. And it really wasn't a good match on the first shot. And I went and repainted it. It got a little better. And I don't know if I just didn't put enough of the green on it. It's a metallic. But it was not a really good match on the first shot. So I'm going to be very aware of that right now. And I have that second windshield up there just as a reminder that to really, really be careful. And you got to take the parts out in the sun, and you've got to look at them from every possible angle. Anyway, that's something we're going to work on today. And you really never know how a day is going to play out, but if we do get a gap of a couple hours in the afternoon before we have to go get miles, I really would like to get a ride on this. I haven't ridden this guy in a long time. He's doing a pitching rotation here for his day, his day at the plate. Somebody's coming to keep me company today. A big eagle. Not a little eagle, a big eagle. Little eagle, big eagle. Little eagle, big eagle. It's pretty funny. The Eagles of Rutherford. Had a morning routine here. The birds get fed, the, the fish get fed. Grandpa Wendy gets a cup of coffee before we even start the day. No, those fish are out of hibernation now. They're hungry. They're as hungry as I am. And we love our fish pond. We love our birds. But most of all, we love that coffee in the morning. And after all that, then we finally get to feed Grandpa Wendy's all set for his coffee. So this morning, the first thing I wanted to do is I had ordered twice from Dime City Motorcycles. They're in Florida. I've ordered two mufflers. They're on two of the bikes, the green bike and the yellow bike now, which was the red bike. Their service was great. The products have worked out well and the price is good. Now if you key in Norton muffler, right down there, $81. And that muffler, it just seems like it has the nice growl sound that I like. And it, it basically is a bolt on on the two bikes that I have. I had no trouble making it fit. One bracket is all you have to make. And whenever I have good luck dealing with anybody, I always like to give them a free plug on the, uh, the videos. Dime cycle, good people to deal with. Now, I was up by Luciano's yesterday, and we had some homemade pizza that was delicious, of course. And I picked up these blinkers from him. I'm gonna polish these up. These are spares, really, for the RD. And you never know when you're going to need a nice clean lens, so we'll put these in inventory. And I'm not sure, let's see, the two-wire bulb? Yeah, the two wires. Okay, so that's not a big deal. I was going to say, if some of them are three-wire, that they have the, the ability to, when you hit the brake light, go on. I would really be interested in that. We could convert them over, but they're, anytime I can get some spare parts for the RD, especially for the upcoming project this winter, I'll take them. And I love the price. I spent some time last night making out a priority list of uh, the jobs I still have to do on this repair. Part of this is going to be, because this has multiple colors here to paint, part of this whole thing is going to be based on getting the things to dry. So the first thing I want to do, this came out great by the way, the bodywork is real nice. I want to get out there, 
while it's still uh, really nice. <laughs> but you never know about this weather. It rained like hell the other day. I want to get this in yellow. So that'll be the first thing. And then I'm very, I want to be very careful I get the match perfect. Now I can check the match right up against this fairing. And then when I do this one, I can check that one. So I'll, really I can kill two birds or three birds or kill a whole flock of birds with, uh, with one FZR. Of course, you never really know until you put the clear on how this is going to play out. But this is the repaired side. <laughs> that looks pretty good. But we're going to have to see when we get the clear on it if that's the case. Luckily, it looks like we have enough uh, touch-up paint. I always try to s save enough, but if we don't, I know where Gavin's is, that's for sure. Oh, well, let's see how that's drying up. Oh, I put it over by the bike. It looks like a pretty good color match. I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's some of the same can of paint, but you never really know. Boy, is that ever mystery meat. Paint is a mystery of life. Now that's going to sit and dry overnight, of course. Now really, no matter how I do this, it's going to require back masking and back masking, so I may as well just get into it. There's, I've often found that uh, there's only one way to get this done, and I just do it. So anyway, I would, I would guess the easiest thing and the best way to do this is going to be to try to get this stripe evened out, and leave the yellow to last. But I don't know for sure if that's how I want to do this. But let me just play this by ear. Some of this I can do with an airbrush, not all of course, and the problem is, <laughs> it's a lot of work. There's no easy way to do this, not that I know of anyway. So what I'll do is I'll leave, let's just see if I can do this. I'm going to back mask the, the yellow for right now. See, I would like to have the yellow be the last color on here, and then do the decals. The FCR decal. Otherwise, what happens? I and the decals are going to be. Once I get the decals on, I want to get clear on them right away. That's for sure. Okay, so rather than crying about it, I may as well just do it. And there's again, there's no really quick, easy way to do this when you have this many stripes. That's why it's good to be a tough guy. Now this is just going to be right here. Everything that's here. See, if I had sanded out all these paint lines, but right now I would be really having to do a lot of measuring. And uh, well, I hope this is going to be the. I hope it's going to be easier of two things to do this. Okay, so now what that does. That gives me everything on that side. I can back mask this with tin foil. And as anybody who's ever really done this knows, sometimes it just isn't a nice, neat, easy way to do things. So it's just like digging a hole with a shovel. You just got to dig in. Okay, so this, this will be that I can redo the stripe. 
And I probably can do a lot of that with the airbrush, but I'm not sure until I actually mask this off. And that's one of the things that remains to be seen right to the very end. We'll so figure that out. That's something that'll just make it a little bit easier. If I, if I look at where the back masking is, I want to cover up the yellow. So I wanted to press this down, and you can see what happens. It leaves an impression here, and then I can just cut this a quarter of an inch in, and I've got a perfect, this is allowing me to make a perfect pattern. The idea being not to get, a, to get the minimum amount of tape actually touching the paint, because tape, of course, leaves residue, and it pulls paint up, and we want to use the minimum amount of tape. And what I found with this particular stuff is a brand new blade is always the answer here to get a nice clean cut and this really is just a convenience thing and you can do it a lot of ways this way seems to work for me and I get nice accurate patterns and I get the minimum amount and Walt Prey was one of the ones not the one of them, he was the one that originally introduced us to this technique Custom, the late wall spray, custom car painter from California. So now with this in mind, I can do this in pieces. So I, because as it's going around a curve, it's going to wrinkle. If you do it in pieces, less chance it's going to wrinkle. Now what that's going to mean is I have nothing yellow exposed. Everything I have exposed here is black and white. So what I'm going to try to do is get an airbrush and touch up the white. I need to be able to touch up the white, then back mask the white and shoot the black. It's going to be a little, well, everything's tricky here. So that's basically that technique and that has worked well for me for many years. So now as I'm planning this out, what I need to do is airbrush in here because that stripe then I can go back, back mask out that white stripe and airbrush in the black. Up here, this has all got to be done. Up here, up here, everywhere. I can't have anything, but I don't want to go so far out onto the black stripe. <clears throat> That's the reason for using the airbrush. Just want to fill in. <clears throat> Boy, I still can't get over this cold. The I still want to get as much of this, so when I put the white tape the tape on the white stripe, I get a nice crisp white stripe. And if some goes over onto the black, it doesn't matter. The black will cover the white very quickly. So I didn't, <clears throat> excuse me, I didn't really think this through, but it looks like that's not going to be as bad as I thought it would be. I can't do much with that. That's got to dry overnight. I think that's going to be now the reback mask. That it's going to be relatively easy, and due to black, the black will cover pretty well. So the way to stay played out, we are a couple of days away from having that ready. The yellow looks like it dried up great. I don't want to call the devil here, but it really looks like it dried up fine. And it looks like the crash red, the crash, the damage that we repaired looks like it's going to be fine too. But we won't know till tomorrow. We come back and look at how the paint dried up. I am a big believer in it dries overnight before I fool with it and start back masking. It. Even though I know you don't have to do that, I'm just old school. What it means is the way the day played out, we got a couple hours to get a short ride in. And we will. I never miss up a chance to ride the old GS. I'm the first owner, one owner, only owner, and always, always a very pleasant bike to ride. 
So I'm just going to go at the radar detector and get the, get the bike ready. That's a great way to spend. If you get done early and paint is drying, what could be better than having an 82 GS to hang out with? Oh, after all these years, she's still a beautiful girl. At least to me. is this our FDR repair parts they're drying at home it's turned out to be a reasonably nice day always nice to get a ride on a GS
Oh, just an amazing, nice ride. Snuck in. You can't believe what a beautiful day this turned out to be. And there's only one thing could make it better if our parts have dried up. Oh, and they have. Wow. Yeah, we'll be able to dive into this tomorrow. Get that, all that stuff straightened out. This is going to be beautiful. Beautiful. So, on this sunny day with the Forsythias in the background, hope you enjoyed sharing this day with us. And thanks for watching.